Hello and welcome back and that's right today we're going to talk a lot more about encrypted volumes on Synology NAS. For those that aren't aware, uh, around about a day and a half ago, two days depending on when you're watching this, um, Synology rolled out the beta of DSM 7.2 and although a lot of different features were added to it that we covered in our video, two of the big standout ones were write once read many and of course volume encryption a long 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 requested feature so if you don't want to check that out on your own NAS system once again make sure you get your backups in place but the beta page is now live it's linked below and there's a whole breakdown just put down the name of the NAS that you've got as well as you can check out our article where we've detailed a lot more of the changes there in our article but what I will say is a lot of the changes and the bigger changes of implementations are ones that you can't apply retroactively. And one of them is, of course, volume encryption. This is something you need to set up at the beginning. And if you've already got existing volumes and you don't really have much space left on your storage pool to play with, this may be something you're not really going to take advantage of. But today's video is about talking about what you can and can't do with encrypted volumes. Uh, we're going to talk through the setup of it. We're going to talk about some of the features that I believe are missing, or at the very least, are available outside of Synology that I hope they implement. And of course, we're going to start with why on earth any of you would actually want an encrypted volume to start with. So let's crack on with that, shall we? Why would you want an encrypted volume? Because let's face it, you can log into your NAS pretty securely these days, right? You can make sure your firewalls are down. You can have two-step authentication. You can disable your baseline admin account there, disable Telnet, SSH, all of that stuff by default. You've got a whole manner of locks there on the outside of your system already. On top of that, if you want, you can go ahead into the file system and when you are creating shared folders for connected users, if you choose to, let's create some random named folder there, you can choose to encrypt that as well. So why on earth would you want to go to the trouble of encrypting the volume as well? Isn't that just overkill? Well, yes and no. Think about flats that you've lived in in your life where you've shared with other people. Don't, aren't that, isn't that the only time in your life when not only was there a lock on the front door, but some of the individual drawers had locks as well? The individual doors, individual areas of the room, the little filing cabinet in the corner. You know, we've all been there. Um, when it comes to encrypting the volume, it's about adding uh, individual, unique, and very um, um, uh, central locks to very select areas of the system. And although currently, at the time of recording, you cannot encrypt a storage pool, you can encrypt a volume, and that's a that's an important detail for a lot of users. Now. There are ways and means this is going to be created, and I'll go into that, and particularly some of the good and the bad for it. But when it comes to utilizing uh, an encrypted volume on your system, bear in mind that there is an element of a point of no return. You will generate a key which is used to unlock this encrypted volume, and that key by default will be stored on the system in its own encrypted locker, something I'll talk you through later in the video. But in some cases, you can have that key off system. And to, what that allows you to do is, if in the event your system is broken into, you can make sure that that system cannot be unlocked internally. They can't just take away the system and have access to it. Of course, if you use the internal locking mechanism, that's a different conversation. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and create an encrypted volume just to show you how it's done. So we go up here like normal, we create a volume, uh, we give it some storage, let's say we're going to give it three terabytes of storage there, that's the available storage on our storage pool. We then click next, let's move that slightly away from my head at the bottom right of the screen. Again, you can utilize an encrypted volume via BTRFS or EXT4, both of them are supported. And from there, that new encrypted volume box will become available. And this will tell you about the system generating an encryption key that um, is then kept inside to auto unlock it every time the system boots. But again, if you try to migrate the drives elsewhere or anything like that, that's when you'll hit some trouble. So if you choose to encrypt that volume, click next. And as you can see on my screen, it's asking me to verify my encryption vault key. Now, you on the other hand, if you're doing this for the first time, you'll be presented with this window. You'll be asked to create your new vault password. Now, the vault lives inside your Synology NAS, which in itself is encrypted, where your encryption keys live. So if you create multiple encrypted volumes, 
All of those keys live within this fault that the system has access to during the boot operation when it runs its internal checks and makes sure that everything is right and dandy before it boots up the system. You'll still need the usual password to get in, two-step authentication and the rest, but at least in this regard, all of those keys are kept internally to make sure the system unlocks at boot. And again, we will talk about that a little bit more later on. As mentioned, it will highlight that once you do create that key, it will invite you to download the individual key as well in case you have to manually unlock that volume later on rather than being reliant on the internal system vault, uh, uh, the, the locker of those. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my own uh, vault locker key. From there, it's now telling me that the volume is going to be created. And as soon as we click apply, we get a new pop-up telling us that we can download our new volume key there, as you can see. And now we've downloaded that key locally. And again, do not lose that key because if your system is ever, um, if the internal locking mechanism is triggered and it requires you to utilize your um, own downloaded key, that is what's going to be needed. Or if you can't access the encrypted locker because you don't know your password or you've lost the password for any number of reasons you're going to need that key we've just downloaded to unlock it so for example we've we've got to confirm that we've downloaded that key and then we click ok and now we should have our encrypted volume there on screen which is signified with a different logo so as you can see there as we're creating it traditional ones just the usual box there that kind of linuxy containery type image and whereas this new volume has got that padlock on board. So what if you do lose that key, or better still, are concerned that a third party has got hold of that key and therefore could unlock your system? Well, if you go into the settings of the individual volume, you'll see as you scroll down to the bottom, a new option has appeared to generate a new key for that individual volume there. And you can use that new generation option where it will ask you to download that new key and from that point forward, the new key is what's going to be needed in order to unlock that volume if the if the lock has been triggered there and you don't have the uh, locker keys from within the system. Going back to the locker keys, if you go to the global settings there, that's the overarching uh, rules and uh, configuration of storage manager, you can see down here the encryption vault key. And you can choose whether to enable or disable the vault key as you can see fit and as you can see because of the vault key um, as you can see on screen because our um, encrypted volume exists there we can't disable that vault key so that means the system will always be able to access that key when booting up the system to give you an example what i'm going to do now is reboot the system i may have to fast forward for you and we're going to restart our synology nas the reason we're doing this is because if you allow the system to hold that key internally, if you reboot your Synology system, which can take a few minutes, the, lock, uh, the locked volume you've created will unlock because the system has the key and it will unlock it. But what I'm going to show you in a moment is after we've rebooted this and demonstrated that the system will indeed unlock and give us access to that because of the internal key, I'm going to show you what happens if you try to reboot the system without the key being stored internally. Let's fast forward to the rebooting of this NAS. So now the system has rebooted and we can make our way in and log into our NAS. Again, the system is literally just rebooted, so there may be some of the apps just in the background still loading up as we speak. But if we make our way in to the storage manager, because that should be one of the first apps that is available to us, we go into the storage, and as you can see, that storage volume is immediately available for use. We can go ahead into the uh, file station there. We can go ahead and create ourselves a new shared folder if we choose. And in that shared folder, we can choose that we want to put it on that encrypted volume, give it a random name there. We're not going to bother with any uh, further levels of encryption or integrity. We can go ahead and now we've created our brand new uh, shared folder on that encrypted volume because it was open to us. And we've got access to it right there. Now, it's worth highlighting, what if you've got other users, what do they see if they're connected to this, if they're not admin users? I don't think it is probably worth highlighting just what a non-admin user will see. Obviously, a lot of this comes down 
to uh, what rights you give an individual user but for example here is a billy basic user no admin access whatsoever and here's what they see and as usual not only can they not even get to the storage area they can't configure any of those settings either so don't be concerned about uh, when you've created this what that end user has access to and as you can see i didn't give this user access to that shared folder on the encrypted volume and it wasn't displayed there so let's make our way back into that storage volume there and we'll talk about some of the things i like and some of the things that i'm less keen on because again by default having that key stored locally isn't something i'm tremendously a fan of yes it's optional but i don't like that the default is to store it locally because i think a lot of encrypted users uh, a lot of encrypted volume uh, users would not like to have that information stored immediately to put that into perspective um as mentioned on the global settings there there was that option whether you want to enable the encryption key vault so what we'll do now is if we disable uh, or we delete that volume because as you can see here one of the things that i'm less keen on is yes that key is kept locally but i don't quite like the idea that i can if i choose to delete that encrypted volume without the actual key yes the key is stored locally in the system and therefore by having the admin credentials that should give me super user status to be able to do that but i'm still not overly keen on the fact that just because i'm an admin i can delete that there should at least be a setting that i have to tick that allows me to do that but once again we go back into the global settings there and this time we can disable that encrypted vault there so as you can see we've disabled that encryption vault there now that's going to be very important later on and let me show you why so if we go ahead create our new volume as you see here and again we're going with the same storage pool as earlier we're going to create that 3000 uh, gigabyte um, area we're going to run it on btrfs and as you can see if we want to enable the volume encryption it's going to create the vault encryption key we don't have any choice on that one so again we've got to go ahead and re-enable and provide access to the internal synology key vault we click uh, enable you can't skip that step and then from there we click ok we once again download our new key we say we've enabled that key we click ok now it will create that new volume there but remember we disabled that vault key because we don't want to keep a key on the system however if we go into the global settings we can see enable vault key there and we can't disable it now which is to me is kind of counterintuitive because i don't know if you've used any other large-scale storage systems when i create a local downloaded key one of the reasons i do that is i don't want the key to live on the system i want the system when it boots to ask me for the key to unlock a volume now i appreciate there are certain difficulties with some apps that may require the key every time there's a reboot and again there are advantages to having that key stored locally within the system within that vault but i don't like the idea that i don't have a choice to disable the uh, encryption key down i'm hoping this is something that changes later on because you can't reset the vault key without resetting um all of the volume encryption keys as well and you will download a brand new key as well but you can't turn off the vault key which is a bit annoying where for example say for example you're far away from the system there's been a firmware update the system has rebooted and it's auto mounted all of those volumes there might be good reason why you didn't want that new volume to auto mount so again Synology if you're watching this hopefully you can introduce the means where you can only allow access to that volume because it's clearly not a booting volume or in, involved in any of the boot process because you've created it after dsm's initialization i would like the option to be able to only unlock that with the key and not use the encrypted vault hopefully that's something we'll get uh, spun out later on as things continue i mean just a quick insert here into the video i realized after recording this that there was one element of uh volume encryption on the synology dsm 7.2 beta that i didn't touch on so i'm just clumsily slamming it here into this part of the video i apologize in advance and that is that 
Right now, although DSM 7.2, the beta is available for a whole range of systems, including uh, um, uh, real tech based systems like the DS223 released earlier in 2023, it's worth knowing that currently volume encryption is not available for those systems. So as you can see, this is a two bay. Ignore the fact it says degraded. It's only because I needed to free up space for this. So ignore it says degraded. If we try to create a volume here, much like we've done in this video that you're seeing, if I try to create a 3000 gig volume, try to go there, the option that would normally would have appeared for volume encryption is not on there. Currently, you cannot create an encrypted volume on the Realtek based systems. Now, the extent to which that is the case, because there may be other CPUs that it's not supported for at the moment, I'm not sure. But I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware that if you're running a Realtek system, and you're going to go with the DSM 7.2 beta, there's every possibility that both uh, volume encryption and support of write once read many isn't available. But let's carry on with the video as it was. Overall, I'd rather have the feature than not have it at all. But I don't like, for example, the fact that an admin user can delete that volume without the physical key and be overly reliant on the internal vault. And I don't like that that um, uh, internal locking mechanism within the Synology that stores all of those keys can't be disabled in favor of a local key to garner access. Now, some of you might think I'm being a tad disingenuous because of course there is the means to unlock the NAS remotely another way. And that's if we go to the reset function there and you get the option of using KMIP. Now, what that effectively means is it's a key that's managed remotely. It allows the vault to uh, the uh, Synology NAS system when it's going through that boot process and looking for the key to unlock the uh, volume in question, it will ping another NAS to get the key that you have stored it on another Synology NAS system. That's great. I like the idea of that. But I don't like the fact I have to own two Synologies in order to do it. I want that exact thing but I want that thing with the key on my local desktop in order to be able to access that volume from within DSM. Again, you can change the password, you can switch it over to KMIP once they are set up together, but I just want that third option to be able to unlock the volume with a local key. You've given me a local key, give me the option in order to use it in that way. Now, maybe this is a setting that will be added later on. Maybe this is a setting that is available, but I can't see it, but I've gone through this thing pretty deep and I can't find that option there and overall I like this feature being added I hope they extend it to storage pool encryption as well even though arguably that is a bigger kettle of fish but still nonetheless this has been a deep dive into volume encryption within the DSM 7.2 beta again I mentioned it at the beginning and I'll say it here at the end one do not install the beta if you're running mission critical data or that uh, install it on any system that has 24 seven use. It will reboot your system. It will make a bunch of applications require updates into their DSM 7.2 counterparts. The next thing, as mentioned in the intro, none of these things can be applied retroactively. Your existing volumes cannot have this encryption methodology instated on them. You can create new volumes and those new volumes can be encrypted much like in the ways I've shown you today, but that is as far as you can go. So do not install this beta and start ripping your storage areas apart for the sake of doing this. See if you need it because again, much like the analogy with the lock on the front door, the lock to your bedroom, the lock on the bedside table, Sometimes you, you don't need all those locks. This is for a very specific kind of user. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll be covering other beta applications throughout the week in DSM 7.2. Do stay tuned for those. There's links in the description to all of those videos that we covered thus far and other resources on NAS Compares. Use the free advice section if you need it, as well as the blog. And other than that, I will see you next time.